Throughout my entire life, I've been involved in the business of education. Uh, when I was five or six, I started kindergarten and really just never left. I uh, went from kindergarten to grade school, to middle school, to high school, to college, and then became a teacher. And most of the time that I was a teacher, for a few decades, I was a high school teacher and mostly taught science, primarily biology and chemistry. Um, few others are science, uh, physics, things like that, but mostly biology and chemistry. And a vast majority of that time was in inner city. Uh, I started being a teacher in the inner city, Kansas City. I uh, was there for quite a while and eventually helped open a charter school in East Harlem in New York City. And when I was in Harlem, that's when I kind of started to become more of a, an administrator. I was a, a dean doing mostly discipline things. Uh, it was really crazy actually being the dean of a Harlem school. But God had other plans for me and I found myself going from Harlem to a little tiny Christian school surrounded by corn on three sides. Uh, literally had cornfields on three sides. And I really kind of always question like, what is that? Like, what was that transition? Why that? Like, what was that? And what I discovered was the entire time I was involved in that Christian school, I tried to engage with the churches around me, um, tried to kind of form relationships with them, so to say. There was a point really kind of in the first year that I looked at the budget um, of that school and I realized it was really kind of on a track to fail. And through prayer and just kind of my understanding of the word, what I believed the best thing to do was to, as a school, tithe. Um, because it says in Malachi that uh, bring your tithes and offering and see that I open up the windows of heaven and pour out such a blessing, there's not enough room to hold it. You know, this is a promise from God. He literally says, test me in this. Uh, so I did. And so I was tithing a little bit to each church, uh, literally every single church in the county. And what I realized after a few years of that, that that was a one way streak. It was one way. Money only went one way. It went into the church and it stopped there. That's where that money died. And also throughout that time, I got to know a few other people involved in ministries, uh, the prison ministry, the food ministry, uh, things like that. And, and as time went by, I, I started to kind of really follow the money more. You know, really kind of paying attention to where's that money going? And what I realized was that these churches weren't what I thought they were. Um, they were focused on themselves. I started to see that that money would go in and then they'd just, it just stayed. They just focused on themselves. Uh, they'd feed themselves, they'd clothe themselves, they'd take care of themselves. Um, there was no effort in that entire county that I was aware of at the time, I, there, there were a few churches doing some small things, uh, real small things. But I would say out of the <clears throat> tens of millions of dollars going into the church where people were literally taking their finances and laying it at the altar of God, that they were taking those um, finances and just simply putting it in their pockets. Um, when Jesus says, feed the hungry, clothe the naked, take care of those orphans, visit the prisoners and sick, they just weren't doing that. Um, and I kind of came up with a saying that you're either, you know, does your church feed the hungry or do they just feed themselves? And I, I just couldn't find anybody feeding anybody at all. Um, and I also came up with a saying that if you're, if a ministry doesn't leave the four walls of the church, you, you just really don't have one. And in that, a righteous anger grew in me. It, it just, all I saw was, you know, it really wasn't the church. It was just people playing church, people putting on what I call the Sunday show. The most important thing was make sure we got the best facility, 
make sure we got the best light show, make sure we got the best smoke machines, guitars, you know, let's put on a show. And people, they flock in, you know, and they throw their money at the altar and then they just go right into their pockets. Um, and I knew this to be so because I knew every pastor in the county, for the most part, pretty well. And, and I, you know, even some of the ones that wanted to help, they would literally tell me, you know, Mark, I'd, I'd love to help. But the problem is, is our, our church board and, you know, they're just not going to do that. They just money, keep it, keep it, keep the money. We need to put the money into this facility. Not, we're not helping anybody. We're not helping anybody. The only feeding that I actually saw um, throughout that entire county in the four years that I was there was they would, there was one church they did like what they call it a Super Bowl, that around the Super Bowl they'd collect cans of soup and I, I don't even know where they gave it to, to be quite honest. But essentially once a year, one church gave out a few cans of soup and that was it. Now, as this righteous anger grew in me, um, I really had nothing like I didn't know what to do with it. I could just, you know, I just continued to fight against it as best I can. But there was a moment in time where God told me to talk about it on this channel. Um, and I thought about that a lot. Um, and I really didn't know how to go about doing that. And then there was another moment where he said, Mark, I want you to go through the book of Malachi verse by verse. And that way you're not calling out the church, but God's calling out the church. Um, that, that it's his way, it's his words. Because the book of Malachi is, a, is a really a, a condemnation on the priests. So at that moment in time, I thought, well, God, how, how am I going to do that? You know, I'm a, I'm a head of school. I have no time. Um, I'm a father. I'm a husband. I, like, there's just no time. And that's when he said, well, I want you to quit. I want you to focus on this thing. And, and I really... Kind of had a hard time with that at first, but I knew that was the thing, that I knew that there was this moment in time where we had to make these things known because nobody else was really doing it. Like I have not seen a lot of people anywhere in any sort of source of media talking about this problem with the church. I would argue that if you took a hundred churches, that at least 99 of them, will be doing nothing at all but feeding their own bellies and putting on the Sunday show. Um, you know, so many people truly believe that there's this, that, you know, if I go to church on Sunday and I throw 20 bucks in the plate and I bring a dish for potluck and I went to the Wednesday night Bible study that I'm a great Christian, I'm a strong Christian. You know, God thinks I'm a warrior. That's not what that... There is no part of that, that that resembles what Christianity is because we are to be the stewards of the Christian faith until Christ returns. And what did he ask us to do? It's pretty simple. Raise disciples. And a lot of you right now at church, you're, you churchgoers, you're thinking to yourself, oh, well, that we do that. We raise disciples. Do you or do you just sit in a coffee shop with a workbook once a week? That is not disciple making. Sure, you might learn a few things, but you're not actually doing anything. A disciple is an action word. It's, it's somebody that's putting Christianity into action. Raise disciples. Who's doing that? Not many people at all. Feed the hungry. No. Clothe the naked. No. Take care of the widows and orphans. <laughs> nope. Um, visit the prisoners and the sick. Nope. Now, a lot of people also might argue, well, my pastor visits the sick, but he only visits his sick, if that makes sense. Like he's just going to visit his people if they're sick, but he's not taking care of sick people. So what you're seeing is you're really seeing nationwide tens of billions of dollars going into a system that's really just feeding a few men. It really is. There's a few men taking in all those billions of dollars um, and they're just that's it just goes into their pocket and that is where it stops. Um, it's literally like you're paying an actor to put on a show or a singer or something you know, put on a show, entertain me. And this, I knew this had to change. So 
there was a moment in time where I, I, I just quit. I quit being in education and I focused my attention on what it was God wanted me to do, which is really to show the people what he wants out of the church uh, was the direction I got. And it's things that you'll see in the book of Acts. It's things that you'll see in the book of Malachi. It's things that you'll see in Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, those things. You're not seeing that stuff in the church. Nowhere in Malachi, Acts, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, anywhere from Genesis to Revelation will you see any direction to go to a bank, take out a loan, build a giant building, have the best lights, the best smoke machines, guitars, and put on a show. And that was that moment that I just knew that that's where I had to turn my focus to. Uh, to change things. And, and as I started to talk about that, what I realized was that hundreds of thousands of people around this world repeated the same thing I saw. You know, people literally would comment, my, my church in Kentucky, my church in Alaska, my church in Florida, my church in Australia, uh, my church in Europe, my church in Africa. They also don't do these things. You know, people were upset. Most people that, that have that heart to be about their father's business are not happy with the church. Let that sink in for a second. Cause if you had a chance like to really see what I saw in the comments about this type of thing is that people are not happy with what they see in the modern church. And it's not really about their happiness. It's more about, they want to be about their father's business. And that is not his business. I don't even know what you call that, but I definitely would not call it a church anymore because that building is not a church. We are the church. So there was this moment in time where my whole life shifted uh, from focusing on teaching teenagers biology and chemistry to declaring the wonderful works of God and what is wrong with what the body of Christ calls themselves and what it is they're really doing, because they're consuming the sacrifice of the altar. If people take their money and they lay it at the altar of the church, and then they just take it and put it in their pockets, it's consuming the sacrifice of the altar. It's the same thing as when people would go to the temple and they would sacrifice a bull, but instead of burning it to ashes like God required, they would cut it up into meat and sell it or eat it. You know, it's the same thing. Um, God actually turned a guy inside out for that one time. He is not okay with it. And he's not okay with what's going on in the church. And that's why I believe this moment in time where I made that shift was so incredibly important. And here I am like three or four years into it. And it's more important now than ever before. Like nothing has ever changed with me. Um, God continues to show me every word I read in his, his word. It shows me they got it wrong. They got it wrong. Um, and I think it's important that we wake up to that. So I, I should make this video primarily to share with you why, like, why am I doing what I do? Why do I criticize the church? It's not a fun thing to do. I love the church, but it's a necessary thing to do.